This is the masterpiece that aroused the admiration of motorcycle fans the world over in 1972. This is the Yamaha TX750. performance two-stroke engines are highly appraised by motorcycle enthusiasts of the world. And Yamaha's first four-stroke engine, XS650, also captured the hearts of many motorcycle fans for its outstanding performance and high-quality workmanship. Yamaha has made an extensive study in quest of what four-stroke twin-cylinder engines can offer. The result is this TX750, tops in today's 750cc class sports models. The world watches a TX750 showing keen interest in every characteristic feature it has. One of the big features of the TX750 is less vibration. First, look at this scene. Next, Let's place the camera on the TX750 and take a picture. See, the TX750 produces very little vibration. The crankshaft vibrates in all radial directions. As long as the piston moves up and down, the vibration can't be suppressed completely, but at least it can be reduced. For instance, the vibration can be reduced by increasing the number of cylinders. However, Yamaha challenged this problem within the design limits of twin-cylinder engines. Look at this diagram. You see the piston, the crankshaft, and the balancer. The balancer is linked to the crankshaft by a chain. You'll see how the balancer works. To reduce the crankshaft vibration, it's necessary to produce another vibration opposing the vibration generated by the crankshaft. So, the balancer is attached to the crankshaft in order to counterbalance the crankshaft vibration. Now, please take a close look at this diagram. A pair of forces, F1, are positioned on the same straight line and oppositely directed, so they are offset by each other. On the other hand, in the case of F2, the twin forces are also oppositely directed, but not on the same line. That is, they are parallel, and as a result, a couple, F2 times L, is produced between the crankshaft and the balancer shaft. 
In order to counterbalance this couple, another balancer is needed. The balancer is attached to the bottom of the anchor. This diagram shows one complete turn of the crankshaft, which is divided into four phases, starting from top dead center. Each phase is 90 degrees. Well, now you can understand the function of the balancer. That's how Yamaha solved the problem of engine vibration. Once more, look at how little the TX750 engine vibrates. By the way, the TX750 crankshaft is made in a one-piece assembly. Next is the lubrication system. The TX750 uses a pressure feed dry sump lubrication system. As you may know, the dry sump system has a separate oil tank outside the engine. Now this is the oil tank. From this, oil is supplied to engine parts through the oil pipe. This diagram may help you understand. The oil tank capacity is three liters. Now this is the feed pump. This is the oil pressure warning lamp. If the oil pressure rises more than specified, the lamp switch turns off automatically and the red lamp goes on. Now this is the check valve. When the oil pump makes the oil pressure increase, this check valve opens the oil passage. Normally, the oil is cleaned by this oil filter. If the filter should clog up, the oil pressure tends to rise. In this case, this short valve opens, allowing the oil into the lubrication line. This is a centrifugal filter. The oil is filtered by means of centrifugal force and a proper amount of oil is fed to engine parts such as the crankshaft and bearings. The oil returns to the crankcase bottom after lubricating engine parts. The returned oil is cleaned by the oil strainer and carried back to the oil pump by means of the scavenger pump. The oil is fed to the transmission gear shifter on the way to the oil tank. That is, the oil circulates repeatedly. In other words, the engine is constantly lubricated by an optimum amount of clean oil. Next is the air cleaner. The TX750 is provided with a paper filter type positive crankcase ventilation, which is widely known as PCV. The TX750 is one of the first motorcycles ever equipped with PCV. The exhaust gases are produced from two sources, that is, burnt gases from the exhaust pipe and blow-by gas from the crankcase. The blow-by gas contains large amounts of unburnt hydrocarbons. In order to prevent the blow-by gas from leaking out into the atmosphere, the TX750 is equipped with PCV. The PCV forces the blow-by gas into the intake manifold for complete combustion. As the piston moves up and down, the crankcase pressure changes accordingly. Thus, the crankcase discharges gases and draws in air alternately. The gases discharged from the crankcase contain blow-by gas leaking out between the piston rings and a cylinder wall. As the piston goes down, the reed valve in the air cleaner case opens and allows the blow-by gas into the air cleaner case. On the other hand, as the piston moves up, the reed valve closes and a fresh air-fuel mixture is drawn in from the intake manifold. By this PCV, the blow-by gas is forced back into the combustion chamber. That is, Yamaha has put special design emphasis on anti-pollution measures.
In this connection, I'd like to refer to another design feature of a TX750. It's the valve seat. Today, everyone knows that the lead contained in gasoline is a major cause of air pollution. It's only a matter of time before legislation will prohibit the use of lead in gasoline. With this in mind, Yamaha has developed a special alloy valve seat for the TX750. If non-leaded gasoline is used for a conventional engine, the valve seat will be worn like this. This special alloy valve seat is a good example reflecting Yamaha's forward-looking attitude. Besides the valve seat, the new design features include a new joint exhaust pipe. This is for noise reduction. This is where improvement is made. The two exhaust pipes are joined at the outlet. The noise level can be reduced through labyrinth construction. To lower the noise, the number of partitions should be increased. Let's use another machine for comparison. Yamaha has solved the noise problem without impairing the engine performance. Special alloy valve seats, unique design of exhaust pipe and air cleaner built-in PCV. All these are adopted as new anti-pollution measures. That's not all. Yamaha has tackled the problem of driving safety, too. Yamaha's attitude toward driving safety is reflected in many parts of the TX750. This is the warning lamp. This is a stoplight warning lamp. If the stop lamp should burn out, the warning lamp will light up. This is the brake lining warning lamp. When the brake lining is worn more than specified, the lamp will light up. This is the oil pressure warning lamp. If the oil pressure drops, the lamp goes off. The meter panel is finished with a black matte coating, and all meters are grouped conveniently for easy check. This is the passing light button. Like a four-wheeler, a passing light is provided. The flasher lamp is made larger in diameter and for better diffuse reflection, it has many special lenses arranged radially. This is the reflector. The sealed beam headlight is bright enough to illuminate the whole road ahead. For additional safety, a reserve switch is provided to automatically switch to the other beam if one burns out. Our headlight isn't nearly as bulky as other headlights. In addition, the battery is a powerful 16 AH. The TX750 has two helmet holders. One key serves four purposes. This is for vehicle inspection certificates. The frame is of double cradle construction, perfect for road racers. And it is so designed that the machine can be banked at 45 degrees. Of course, both maneuverability and stability are excellent. In order to withstand high-speed operation and minimize the weight, the wheels are fitted with an H-shaped aluminum rim. For extra safety and powerful braking, a 200 mm diameter brake drum is employed. The TX750 uses a single disc brake for the front wheel, 
and the drum brake for the rear. The drum brake is an internal expansion type. That is, the brake shoes are forced outward against the rotating drum to stop the wheel. On the other hand, the disc brake has two pads to grip the turning disc. The disc brake has four major features. Fade-free braking is insured for repeated applications of the brake at high speeds. Braking action is not impaired by water. No adjustment is required for pads. And braking is extremely smooth even at high speeds without abrupt locking of the wheel. When the brake is applied, heat is generated. Therefore, it is essential to dissipate the heat as quickly as possible in order to prevent brake fading. In contrast, the disc brake has a tendency to dissipate heat quickly because only a part of the disc is covered with the caliper. It always ensures stable braking for repeated applications. Unlike the brake drum, the brake disc is exposed, but its performance is not adversely affected by water or dirt. That is, the disc brake guarantees stable performance even in rain. The disc brake was originally developed for racing cars featuring maintenance-free construction. In the case of the drum brake, when the brake shoes and drum are worn, Brake lever play increases accordingly, requiring adjustment. But the disc brake is self-adjusting. The gaps between the disc and pads are automatically adjusted. This is with the brake off. This is with the brake on. In short, when the pads are worn, they are pushed toward the disc by oil pressure in proportion to the amount of wear. When the brake lever is released, the pads are slightly forced back from the disc by the elasticity of the piston seals. That is, the pads are shifted according to the amount of wear on the disc and pads. Well, as I've already explained, the TX750 is really an excellent machine. understand why Yamaha is so proud of the TX750. It's a truly big machine. Manufacturing techniques in the fields of two and four stroke engines.